Hello, I have this small issue with my cockpit. I have this big red button that I can smash like there's no tomorrow if I need to eject in any, any games. But all the cool kids have proper ejection seat handles in their cockpits, so I really need to make one myself. And perhaps I can be a cool kid someday, except I'm making videos about simulation cockpits and I'm al almost 40. Anyway, I designed this model to fit into my center console, but if this is something that you would like to try out, I have the STL files available, links in the description, so you can print one yourself and follow the instructions. After getting all the necessary stuff like micro switches, LEDs, a pin, and most importantly, Docs Tutoy, I started designing the housing in Fusion 360. This is quite simple setup with few interesting twists that I'm going to walk you through when I'm building this. After the model was ready, it was time to warm up the trusty Ender 3 V2 and start printing. This print took pretty much 24 hours to complete, and I printed this in black PLA, since I'm not planning to do any engravings on this one. If you want to see what white PLA painted black looks after laser engravings and background lights, check my previous DIY video. Spoiler alert. It looks great. I still had to sand this and paint it black so it would look like the panels I have planned for the future. When the print was ready it was time to get to the workshop which at the moment is quite a mess since I'm rearranging everything to suit better my needs in the future builds. First thing I did before anything else was glue the rope in the handle and this is actually where I screwed up a bit because I didn't realize that well, this is a cheap dog's toy so the rope really just started to unravel. I had to save the day by printing a few color pieces here and it helped a lot. It actually looks quite now. So after some sanding, epoxy and paint, it might even look better than my original plans. So I think we could agree that this is what I had planned and everything went just as I planned. Only thing that might have made this even better was using something like heat heatable shrink wrap around this end of here, but I didn't have an anything available, so this will have to do. Before I'm going to start working with the mechanism itself, I need to add these things. These are small threaded inserts that I'm going to heat with soldering iron and push in place so I can screw the lid in place afterwards. I could have just driven the screws through the whole thing to the wood, but I want to be able to take the lid off easily. I haven't used these things before, and smart person might have actually printed something where he can try this on before using them in proper work, but I don't have anything available at the moment, so we'll just have to see what happens. Next step, we need to somehow tell the computer that when I jank the eject handle off, I want to actually push the eject button in game. I'm using these things, micro switches, that are connected to my Leo Botner board. If you're not familiar with the button boxes, Leo Botners are doing something like that, you should check my last DIY video. I'm explaining that stuff a bit better in that video. Basically, this thing is a button. When I wire it in normally open position, if I press it down, it closes the circuit and sends a button press to the computer. And if I wire it in normally open position, in this way, it actually keeps the button pressed when nothing is pressing it. And if I press it down, it sends the button press to the computer. And this is what I want to use in this case, because I want it so that when the handle is in place, it shouldn't do anything. But when I yank the handle off, it should send the button press to the computer, telling me, telling the computer that I want to check. So after that, it's just a matter of attaching this micro switch into the enclosure. Again, a smart person might have actually measured everything precisely and added ready-made holes for this, but I didn't think about that at the time, so I'm just adding some epoxy and few screws to keep, in, keep it in place until it cures. The basic mechanism is ready, but there's still some work to do. The handle is just resting in this socket, and I might actually quite easily just yank it off by accident. So I need to add some tactile feedback, and for that I fastened this thing. This might be actually a good point to mention that I'm not a mechanical engineer or anything like that. I did my master's degree in marketing and I actually do enjoy my career. I'm working as a marketing manager in B2B business, but that means that most of the time I have no idea what I'm doing. This setup and this plan 
it's just, just something I'm winging, winging off as I go. But quite often it still ends up working at least well enough, so I'm happy with it. So the way this thing works is this is just giving some resistance because it fits here in here. And I also have a spring in here just to kind of make it sure it gets back to its normal position. And let's try it out. Click. And another nice click. Almost done, but just one more extra de extra detail that's completely useless but fun. I have this pin and this is basic, basically a mechanical arming system. I'll push it through the setup and I cannot pull the handle off. When I take it off, I can pull the handle off. And I'm also going to add another micro switch on the other side, inside the center, center panel. So when the pin is pushed in, I have a red light on in the mechanism, so it tells me that the ejection seat is not armed. And when I pull it off, the lights go, light goes off. I have this red 12 volt LED that I can actually just connect to the 12 volt circuit that I have going through my cockpit. One more extra thing. I have this yellow and black tape here because I had it out there. I kept hitting my head there all the time. So just as an extra decoration, let's add this to the cover. And now this thing is ready for installation. So let's get back to the cockpit room. And the noise you hear from the background, we have a 30 square meter aviary room for our cockatiels and budgies right next door. So normally they're sleeping while I'm recording, but it's a bit earlier, so they're still awake. Okay, to finish this setup, I need to do a few things. First, I'll need to take the cover from the center console. Then drill in few holes. After that, I'll attach the housing for the eject handle and attach the micro switch inside that controls the red LED. Then just add the cover on, attach this thing to the Leo Bodner board. And after some vacuuming, it's time to go to settings and set this thing up. Almost forgot this really important last little detail here. Everything is ready and I have configured joystick trembling to press the right V-joy button when I yank the handle off. So let's give it a try. First we need to arm the ejection seat and then let's try that one again. So there you have it, working ejection seat handle that you can build yourself if you want to just download the STA file and start breathing. If you want to see this setup in action in future or see what sort of project I come up with to upgrade everything, don't forget to subscribe.